Hello everybody, this is our first idea assignment. Uh, we will be analyzing a sample of payments data for, uh, for the city of uh, Somerville in Massachusetts, and our sample size is 4,999 records. Number one uh, requires some reading, and so no guidance is needed there. Number two, import the data into IDEA. I have IDEA. It's home import. It is Microsoft Excel data. My data is right over here in data sets, and it's the Somerville sample. We'll do open, and we will do next. I'm going to abbreviate at the bottom here Somerville. We'll do OK. And I have it. And what I require here is a screenshot uh, of the first 10 rows up to number 10 of the first four columns across. And then I know that you've uh, done this correctly. And you will do the screenshot using the snipping tool in Windows. Number two, good. Number three, create a table of the monthly totals for the invoices. In order to do this, we are going to have to add a calculated field right at the end here, which identifies the month of the year. And I'm going to do that with a data add. I'm going to add a new field called month. I'm going to go down to the little calculator here. There we go. I'm going to use the function called month. There it is. Give it a little double click. And I'm going to say, give me the month, but you have to look at the field called check date. So I've highlighted check date, a little double click there. Whoops. How about a better double click? And now we have at month of check date. If I do validate and exit, it's looking good. Uh, added field description, we might as well just put in month of the year, and we'll do OK. Now I have a field here called month, and it goes from 1 to 12, and it looks at the field called check date. I now need to sum all the amounts for month number 1 all the way through to month number 12. In order to do this, I need to go to Analysis, Summarization. There we go. And I want to do it by month, and I want to sum the field amount. So by month, sum the field amount. Everything looks good there. Uh, we can do that, and I'm going to make the file name month tot for month total, and we can create the result here, month tot for month total, I can go OK, and isn't this nice? We're done. For month number one, the total is 1.9 million and change. Um, this is a bit cumbersome to work with this total here, so I'm going to go in here and click on month tot, there we go. Um, this is indeed the answer to number three. You have a table of the monthly totals. Which month of the year has the highest total? In this case, we can simply look and see which month it is. If we had a very long list and we don't want to look through 200,000 items, we could go data sort, and we could sort by the sum descending, and if I do that, I will get the months with the largest dollar amounts in total at the top. Has the highest total? We just did that. Prepare an abbreviated table of the descriptive statistics, and so those are the descriptive statistics here. And fortunately, although I need to close this, and I need to close this because I'm done, 
and I need to close that and I'm going to go back to Somerville checkbook. I gave it a little double click there and it's open again. Uh, idea will always work with what you have open in front of you and I need the amount and I need those field statistics. If I go to the right here, I get field statistics, a little double click and now I get the field statistics on the amount and net value is the sum, which is the top row. I can get everything here except the median. And so for that, you could just do something like not available. Idea doesn't do the median. At least it's not going to do so today. That's number five. The average of the complete, the full data set, all the payments is 12,000 and change. We do expect the average of the sample to equal this amount. And the answer here, I'll try and be as brief as I can. I expect the average of any sample to come close to that number. It could be higher and it could be lower. The larger the number of records, the more records in my sample, the more I expect the mean of the sample to come close to the mean of the population. So again, probably, but not exactly. It could go higher or lower. The bigger the sample, the closer my expectation is that the mean of the sample equals the mean of the population. The mode, the most frequently occurring number in the full data set is 135. What is our mode? So again, I need to close this. I need, I'm not going to work here. I'm going to go to data. And I want the mode, the most frequently occurring amount. I'm going to go back to analysis summarization. I'm going to go field to summarize amount, field to total amount. However, for the mode, I really want the count. But the count comes along for the ride. So mode, mode, I'll get the count, even though I'm asking it for the sum, we'll do OK. Again, this is giving, telling me that there's one record for minus $80, one record for minus $56, two records for $3.45, this is a bit messy. I want to find the dollar amount where I get the highest count of the records. I'm going to, in fact, close this and go to mode. And there it is. And I'm now going to sort by the number of records descending so that I get the largest count at the top. And so we go back in here, data sort, sort by Number of records, not ascending, but descending, we'll do that. And this is wonderful. It's telling me that there were 66 instances of 135, 51 instances of 100. This is the mode, the 66 in instances of 135. What is the mode of the sample? We do expect the mode to equal this amount would you expect it to be higher or lower? Well, the answer here is a bit longer. My mode is 135. If I had two other dollar amounts that were really close to 66, maybe 65, maybe 64 over there, um, in my population, again, in my population, three numbers with approximately the same count right near the top, when I take a sample, Either one of these three could come out as being the most frequently occurring number in the sample. And my answer, therefore, is I would expect the mode of the sample to equal this amount. However, if there are a number of numbers right near the top that all have similar accounts, either one of them could be the mode in the sample. Run the first digits test. I'm going to close out there, get back to here. And again, we're talking about Benford's Law. I want to check the digit frequencies of amount over there. 
and we'll go analysis, Benford's law, I'm busy with number nine. We're good over here, but I don't want these. I will just clutter up my analysis. And I do want suspicious. Um, we're good with an OK. Isn't this amazing? There we go. This is my first digit graph. Under Benford's law, these are my expected counts. It's in fact 30.1, 17.6, 12.5, all the way down to 4.6%. The bars give my actual counts, and in this case, it's telling me that my actual counts are more than Benford's law, and so these are all the numbers beginning with 1. And so I'm expecting 30.1%. I'm guessing that I have something like 32% over there. I'm above, but this, this graph isn't that bad. It's telling me the actual proportion of numbers with the first digit 1, actual uh, count for the first digit 2, all the way up to the actual count for the first digit nine. And we can see that in general, we have lots of numbers with low first digits and very few numbers with a high first digit. We'll go back over here. Screen shop, uh, screen shop of your first digit graph. And indeed you will screenshot that. And this would be the answer to number nine. What Number 10, what level of conformity does the data have to Benford's law? Use the mean absolute deviation. There is the mean absolute deviation, 007, just like James Bond. And the deviation is the difference as a proportion between Benford's law and the actual the difference between Benford's law and the actual, difference between Benford's law and the actual, that's the deviation. The mean absolute deviation is the average of all these deviations, but it doesn't matter which direction the deviation is, if I'm over or if I'm under. It's the average of the absolute differences. And here my conclusion is acceptable conformity, and there's a section in the book that talks about the mean absolute deviation and these conclusions. Run the first two digits test. We've already done that. And if I can see the first two digit result by going here, you can see the one and the two are underlined. I gave it a little click. And here is my first two digit graph. Show a screenshot and a screenshot of the graph would be good. What level of conformity? My mean absolute deviation, again, it's all these deviations the absolute values, and it's the average of them. The mean absolute deviation is there. The conclusion is marginally acceptable conformity, and this is, it's okay. It's okay, and you can see it is pretty much just okay. It's, it's not that bowling me over. The fit is not that great, but it's also not that terrible, so I get marginally acceptable. Identify the first two digits that have the three largest spikes. A spike is when we go over, when the actual count is much higher than the Benford's law count. And indeed, I get that with highly suspicious, and those are the dark pillars, that we can, the dark spikes that we can see here. And they've um, highlighted them for us. There it is, actual count. And this is the count of the first two digits, 50. So 50 is one of the three highest spikes. Actual count of 75, so the 75 is another spike. I have more numbers beginning with 75 than expected, and you can see here the 75 is about double the expected, and 85. In fact, for the 85, I have more than double, and so the, the three highest spikes belong to the first two digits, 50, 75, and 85. Did you expect the check payments data to follow Benford's law? The answer is yes, I did, because I read the book. And in the book, it says on page 95, a little bit down there, accounting and finance data sets generally do conform to Benford's law. Accounting and finance data sets generally do conform to Benford's law. Yes, that is why I expected this data set to also conform to Benford's law. 
even though in this case it's coming out with a marginally acceptable. Number five is a uh, check the case submission checklist. And uh, that's all from me. Bye-bye.